It's a camera. We have a big episode in the store. Two different team strategies. And then we're going to talk some powers too, possibly. Metafix? Alright, um, I don't even know where to start, I got two to talk about, let's talk about the easy one, the trend, brand new trend I didn't see coming, um, two characters have made their way very strongly into the meta for specific reasons, um, they are goddamn hard to keep down. Um, let's start with the guy. I, look, if I show you the silver side, it's him, right? I do have one on my way. Um, imagine this absorbing man, but painted silver. He is Guardian uh, Absorbing Man. He is something that I ran into recently, and he's damn hard to kill. Uh, it's shocking that I haven't seen him in more of the ROC tournaments. Uh, I'm guessing he was a hard to get figure in the uh, in the tournament runs that he was in. Uh, so, but I don't know how to how to even apply the fact that he didn't show up. Probably the incapacitate was able to stop him. There are ways of stopping him. The harder to stop is Bizarro. Um, his variable point level makes him fit into a lot of possible situations. But more importantly. <clears throat> His tokens, the way they work, they go up and down um, as he gets hurt and gets healed. Um, so the fact that he can get tokens back when he heals is pretty pivotal to the fact that if you give him, oh, I don't know, Angrier's Hammer, then all of a sudden he has regeneration and steel energy. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> Um, in fact, one of the teams that, um, was submitted by one of you, uh, by you guys are fans for the gauntlet, uh, competition was that, um, we'll see how it fares. Uh, it is one man army, which I'm generally pretty good at taking on. Um, but we'll see how it fares. Um, this one, this, this particular portion of the, uh, can't touch me strategy, I came across by accident, as a matter of fact. This recent weekend, we had a tournament where it was build three 600 point teams and use a different team in each army and each team had to be different, very different. Um, so team one for me was, uh, Midnight Suns. Um, team two was, what was team two? Team 2 was a martial artist team, which actually turned out to be very effective. I find my martial artist teams great when they're not getting energy exploded. Um, but my shield team was my third team going into the finals. Now, I hadn't expected to win, um, and it was a bloodbath that kind of went into the deep ends of things. But one thing I did notice is Deathlock A is awesome. The Deathlock Prime, of course, from Wolverine and the X-Men. But he's even better when shield agents are next to him. Shield agents have an ability. Any shield, any character with the shield keyword uh, within eight squares of them and higher point value get mastermind, but only to pat transfer damage off to shield agents. That's like a little protected for you. <laughs> um, now, of course, the shield agent can be outwitted unless... Oh, look at that stuff. <laughs> so... Yeah, I thought this was a very cool trend. Um, I haven't seen it absolutely crush yet, but uh, I feel like the metagame may have opened up again. Um, what with some things getting curbed uh, by the last by the watch list and the recent rules just changed. Changes. Blech. But I want to go into another thing that is uh, making the rounds or making itself um, visible. Um. Uh, what are we, we going to name? I think we're going to name this one, I Don't Have to See You. <laughs> um, and this is basic strategies where characters can, in, in some cases, can sit in starting areas, 
and still be able to um, to functionally damage their opponent. Um, of course, the original King was the Doctor Strange when flanked with Astral Doctor Stranges, or, you know, flanked by the Astral Doctor Stranges he's made. Astral Doctor Stranges are awesome. They're a pain in the butt with their super senses and all. Um, and they're great to, uh, great to throw in there for Doctor Strange's range. Um, Doctor Strange never, again, never has to leave his starting area. And, you know, when he can start pumping his damage through those guys, he does get pretty awesome. Um, Phantom X, we all know, he's very straightforward on his own. Uh, creates an EVA, shoots through EVA. He's got range combat expert. Um, and Sharpshooter, which makes him that little step above Doctor Strange. The other step above Doctor Strange is that he can use Eva for counting his range from. So if Eva's 15 squares away, and then there's another 5 squares between the character and Eva, Fed Max is going to be shooting still. <laughs> so, um, there is that. Uh, this one caught, catches a lot of people off guard, and that's Maria Hill. Um, she doesn't shoot, uh, from, you know, other characters, but what she can do, and this is very effective, I've found, she can use Outwit, uh, which is her standard power, but she's got the ability to use it as a power action, counting lines of fire from an opposing character. It's very effective, I find, uh, especially in keeping certain characters from doing certain things. If you see, like... Uh, there's, there's that potential you can see in the distance of alpha strikes and stuff like that. And you can you can put a stop to those pretty quick. So, um, this guy, I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, left field, who saw him coming? He's awesome. And that's Talos. Uh, the fact that he's not limited by keywords with this thing is amazing. Um, and the fact that he basically becomes an outcropping of lines of fire from characters that are out from him. Um, but it's not just the lines of fire, it's counting squares. Do you know who counts squares? Professor X. So effectively, you can use Telus as kind of a staging point, throw another character off in the distance, with Professor X near Telus, Telus near the other guy, and then you can count the eight squares away from the other guy, and now, Professor X is stopping, or is turning power actions into double power actions from across the board again. Yeah. So, th this is one of those strategies that's kind of, it's in its infancy. It hasn't had a chance to really flourish as a main strategy. And there's a lot of weaknesses to it. Um... Unlike the first team where pretty much most of the characters are able to do whatever they like. <clears throat> because a lot of their things can't be ignored. These characters can be ignored. Um, Ava as a source of whatever she is. She's, she's limited in the fact that she's a one-click character. And the other problem with that one-click character is that Eva moves the Phoenix... Uh, the Phoenix Force, she moves Books of Skulls when she, like, this, and I'm referring to when she dies. When she dies, she moves Books of Skulls, she moves Phoenix Forces, Flaming Turkeys, however you want to refer to them as, I often refer to them as gigantic burnt sparrows. Um, as well, um, Doctor Strange is only as strong as the Astro Doctor Strange is, which are three clicks. Um, I also, though, uh, Doctor Strange, he's got a, I think he's got a short time limit at this point. Um, I have a feeling that the next cuts might actually see him leave the game. He's also very high points for what he does. Um, uh, Maria Hill, on the one hand, being 60 points, that power action does kind of leave her back, but she is, she does have willpower to go with it and sidestep, so she can keep moving with your team, and she does come with the shield team ability. Uh, tell us the tell us Professor X one is the potent one in this set of things. He's hard to deal with. It's a it's a, it's a hard thing to go with. But one of the things to note is that in the three hundred point meta game, they do take up two hundred and thirty two of your points. That does only leave you sixty eight points to really kind of make the team work to 
in, 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 a, in as a whole. So you do kind of put a lot of faith in them, but the fact that Doctor the, the Professor X has an eight range triple target mind control that he doesn't take feedback damage from is uh, intense. Um, so I see those two getting played with a lot of toys, uh, flocks of bats, uh, low point characters, just to get those ranges out. Um, yeah, so that's our double episode of Metafix. Uh, next week we're going to try to address some more power base, because I think I've gone over quite a few of the strategies. It's time to start talking about in-game strategies, so we're probably going to use some, probably going to zoom in on a map and, uh, get some small, the the tight games, uh, the pulse waves, the the lining things up um, oh, with that. We have had quite a good response so far from the from the gauntlet style tournament that we're running or where we've had quite a few really interesting, some okay um, team suggestions. Um, it's, it's one of the things you got to remember with these teams is you beat my two teams. There's still other teams you've got to beat and thump and curb stomp away from that. That are also part of the ever growing meta game. Um, but keep the keep them coming. Uh, April fourteenth is our cutoff date. Uh, we might actually have to get a head start on playing some of the games soon. So there's that. Um. Until next time, that's Metafix.